Hi everybody. Today I'm going to be tying the bullet head caddis fly uh, created by Al and Gretchen Beatty. It's a really fun fly, uh, especially the fact that it has the bullet head which can be applied to other patterns out there in the fly tying world, both in trout and other um, fish applications. It's also a cool pattern because you get to spin deer hair and then trim it away and it's really a lot of fun to kind of make this big ugly mess and then trim it away and see exactly what it looks like underneath all that deer hair. Um, I really do love tying with deer hair, as you'll probably be able to tell from watching this video. This is also a really fun pattern to fish. A lot of guys will fish this pattern with, uh, for brook trout, a, a really aggressive type of fish, but it's also great to be used in pocket water because it just has a really nice profile once it's sitting on the water. Don't be afraid to use it in a little bit faster moving water because it will float really well being that it's tied with a spun deer hair body that's been trimmed and it's got a really nice deer hair wing as well kind of holding it up. The underwing I tie with uh, some squirrel, some body hair, but don't be afraid to use maybe some CDC under there as well or something else, maybe even a piece of foam if you really, really want to ensure that this, uh, this is a really high floating fly or if you want to ensure that it will float for a really long period of time. This is also a fly that you can use kind of later in the summer. You can slap it down to kind of uh, almost mimic the beetles that went, as they're dropping off of trees and off of, other, uh, off of other things. And fish will be aggressive whenever they take it in that sense. But I've also had luck using this fly in more of a, a, calmer, a calmer water and a, a calmer moving water section. No, not necessarily still water, but just a section where you really wouldn't think a fish would take a fly that's tied like this because it almost seems like they would have more than enough time to look over it and determine that it may not exactly be you know, the true or the realistic um, pattern or the realistic fly that you're trying to imitate. Anyway, I do apologize for the length of this video. Um, it is a longer fly to tie, so you don't want to lose these flies when you're out there fishing because there is so much spun deer hair. I kind of did take my time for the sake of the video uh, and tried to explain as much as I could with this pattern because there's lots of other pieces of this fly that can be applied to other assets or other um, other areas of your fly tying. So um, I really encourage you to try tying a few of these. It's a great pattern to tie. It's a lot of fun to fish with, uh, more importantly. So enjoy watching this video on the bullet head caddis fly. All right, let me start getting um, this fly tied, the bullet head caddis fly by Alan Gretchen Beatty. Some of the materials used on this fly are pretty much your everyday materials. The thread I'm going to be using is a guide abroad 6 aught, a chartreuse color. Uh, don't be afraid to use caddis green or any other colors to kind of match the body of the natural that you fish for. The, um, the body is going to be tied with spun deer hair. Here's a clump of deer hair that I've been using for quite some time. It's kind of a medium color. You will see this tied um, with darker and lighter. And a lot of guys will prefer elk hair because they believe it's a little more durable. So if you want to you know, go with that, you're more than welcome to. I'll be using this for the, for the overwing and for the body. And then finally for the underwing, I'll be using some fox squirrel. I'm not going to be using the tail, I'm going to be using some body fur, I'm actually going to be using the longer fibers because I really like the coloration of some of these longer fibers in this. I'll be pulling away the body fur and I'll kind of explain all that later whenever I get into it just to get those guard hairs. And then finally I'll be using a piece of a peacock at the very head. In fact I better grab that now so I have it ready. Okay so I'm just going to be pulling a piece of peacock off of the eye it doesn't have to be anything special. I'm just going to pull off one piece and I'll refer to that later. So let's get this fly going. Um, I'm going to be starting at the, the front. I'm just going to put a few wraps in and then work my way back to the front. I'll trim this off and the first thing I'm going to do is actually tie in the overwing or that bullet head, the deer hair that's used for that. Now it's really up to you depending on how much you want to use. Um, I really don't, it doesn't really matter how much. I like to grab a nice clump. It's tough to say exactly how much. But I'm going to grab a pretty decent sized clump. I have a separate set of scissors that I use for, for clipping away deer hair. Michael John has always told me that deer hair can be kind of aggressive on scissors and wear them away. Whether or not that's true, I don't know, but I'm going to take his advice. I have a comb, just kind of comb out some of these, some of these finer hairs that are found in this deer hair, just to get them out of there. I can pull them out after I have my little comb, comb them out. And then finally I am going to stack these. I have a little brass stacker that I'm going to use for this. So I'm just going to place them tips first in my stacker. Then I go over to a hard surface and stack them. When I open this up I'm going to make it so the tips are facing forward. I'm going to grab them with my right hand, get my stacker out of the way. And then to line this up, I'm going to line it up with the body 
pretty much just body length. Then we're going to add just a couple more millimeters. Somewhere around that, that point. Because it doesn't matter if it's a little bit long or a little bit short. Um, it's, it's okay if it goes long in this pattern. You don't want it to go too short. So I kind of actually prefer it to go a little bit longer. But for the most part, this bullet head always seems to work out. And it's more for the flotation. Now you can see as I'm, I'm tying this in, I'm not getting too aggressive with my thread. I'm just making a few nice little wraps. And then when I start pulling it tight as I get to wrap five or six, you'll notice the deer, head I'm, deer hair I'm using is it really flares. But I do want to make sure it's locked in there. So I'm wrapping back and I'm fairly aggressive as I'm wrapping back. Now at the back, I want to get rid of all that deer hair immediately. I don't want that in there. All this excess. So I'm just going to take a moment right now and trim all this stuff away. Everything at the front I can leave for now. I'm actually going to be wrapping that the whole way back to the um, the eye. But for the time being, I really don't have to worry about it. So I'm just going to take my these extra deer hair fibers, make sure they're lined up so they're all on top of the hook shank. So I'm going to kind of spin them around to make sure they're all on the top. Just kind of pull them so they so they lie flat for the most part. My lock in the tips. You can see it might spin on you a little bit, and that's okay if you feel like you want to put a little head cement in there to prevent that. You are more than welcome to. Okay, so I got that front locked in. Now I'm just going to wrap to the back. I'm going to create a little tag, which could represent the, an egg laying caddis here. I'm going to create this tag. I'm going to go pretty far down this hook bend, a lot further than, than you would normally expect. But I do want to make sure I keep my thread tight the whole time. Then I start coming back up around six to eight wraps up. Okay, so I'm just getting back to around the hook, the, the barb of the, of the hook, maybe a, a wrap or two again back towards the, the rear. At this point, I'm going to start grabbing my deer hair to stack. So I'm going to go back to this little clump of deer hair. From the patch, I'm just going to pull out a nice size clump, trim it off. Let me get my comb again. I'm just going to comb out some of that under stuff, the under uh, hair, and then I'm simply going to put it on top and spin the deer hair. I'm going to make one wrap, two, and just spin it in there. I'm not going to worry about stacking them now. That's not really as important. I do want to try to keep them as tight as possible, so I'm going to press them with my fingernails towards each other. I'll just wind up a little bit. I've wound up, I might grab another clump. Good. Again, trim it off. Get my comb. Comb out the excess. Place it on top. Spin that in. And again, push them towards one another, advance my thread. I should be able to do this about two more times. So I'm going to put about four clumps down. This is a lot of fun. I, um, I started tying up over 20 years ago and I do remember some of the original patterns I tied and I still have them today. And a lot of those those first fly tying classes after we learned the basic flies it always seemed like we had our choice of what we could tie. And I really loved spinning deer hair. The flies looked atrocious, but it was a lot of fun uh, spinning all this deer hair and then trimming it away afterwards. I really still enjoy tying a lot of my flies with deer hair to this day. Okay, I'm getting to my last clump. Just want to pick up, make sure I'm not too far forward yet. I'm getting actually a little far forward. Maybe I'm just going to take this clump, remove some of the fibers from it. I may not need as much as I originally thought. I'm going to push those back. And then what I'm going to do at this point, 
I'm trying to get all those the fibers that I was wrapping um, the body with that I was spinning. I'm trying to get those away from the head. So I'm just gonna at this point stop everything I'm doing and I start to trim these these fibers back. You, I want to be careful at this point. I don't want to trim my thread. That's something that could really you know cause a few problems here if you trim your thread. So right now I'm just doing some just some basic trimming to get everything out of the way. Because whenever we do finally trim this fly, we're going to be using some aggressive trimming then. But for the time being, we're just getting all these the longer the longer hairs out of the way. See what we have to work with and go from there. As I mentioned at the beginning, this is definitely a longer fly to tie at times and it's because of some of this this trimming. I have tied this fly a couple different ways thinking there might be an easier way to get away from getting everything clumped at the front but I have yet to find a really solid way yet. So if you have one please let me know. Okay now what I'm doing I'm using a fi my finer scissors I'm just reaching into this clump I'm getting some of those fibers that may have snuck in from the body I don't want them anywhere near these tips for this. Now if they're there, is that going to cause a problem? Absolutely not, but I just don't want them there. I'm also going to refine a little bit of this body now. I can pretty much see everything I'm working with. I do want to trim it relatively close to the hook if I can. I don't want to trim so close that I can see the thread the whole way through it, but it's okay if you can see a little bit of the thread through it, then you know you are getting really down. Okay, I'm nearly done. Make a couple more cuts here. Keep my fingers crossed that I don't accidentally touch the thread and trim that by accident. Okay. All right, for the most part, I'm going to call that finished right now. I'm going to lift up this front section just to show you exactly what's going on near the near the eye of the hook to show you how much room I have to play with. But before I do anything with that, I'm just going to secure this thread in here and I might go back down to my underwing, which is going to be as I mentioned earlier some fox squirrel body hair. Let me grab my scissors. I'm going to pull out a nice size clump and just trim. I'll show you exactly how I'm doing this. I pull out a clump, lock it with my thumb, and just trim a nice section of it out. This is what that section looks like that I just cut. I grab it by these tips and then pull all this under fur out of the way. This is great fur to hold, hold on to this stuff. You can use that dubbing some other patterns. But for the time being, all I want are these fibers here. I don't want necessarily a lot of them. And I don't want those really long ones that are in there, so I'm just going to kind of pull those out with my fingers just so I have a few that are in there that will create some type of uh, other pattern for those fish if they're able to see this. I'm going to lock this in with just a few wraps. I just use my scissors, trim away this excess. And don't be afraid when you're doing that. You might trim away some of your... your um, it's going to be used for your overwing for the bullet head, and that's not that's not the biggest deal in the world if you accidentally do that. Okay, finally I'm going to now tie on my piece of peacock. I'm going to use this, and I don't necessarily have to do this. This is one of those optional points. I choose to put put this in. I'm going to just tie it in from this point, and then I'm going to wrap forward. Um, some people will just leave this head whatever color your thread is. Um, some guys will change it. Some guys will put in dubbing. Um, it's really up to you. I do like that black head look of a caddis, and that's what I believe this peacock will give me. So I'm just going to wrap forward now. I'm wrapping towards the eye. I want to. I want to make sure I get these these uh, deer hair fibers as close to the eye as possible. So I'm just constantly turning this, moving it. While I'm doing that, I notice there are a few other fibers in here that must have snuck in from. The body so this is a good point to just trim them now get them out of there you might see more of these fibers as you're tying and that's not a big deal 
it probably wouldn't even hurt to leave them in there. They might add to the floatability of the fly. But for my purposes, I'm going to get them out of here for now. Okay. I'm going to tie back to where I placed originally placed my, uh, my underwing. I'm just going to stop there. I'm going to wind my peacock back. There will be a little bit of my chartreuse colored thread showing, so don't be too concerned if, if you notice you're using really bright thread and, and you can see it. Unless you choose to either change threads or just tie on something else, um, that will happen. That's probably not the worst thing in the world. Okay, and it's at this point now we're going to form our actual um, the bullet head, the fun part of this. I'm going to be grabbing the deer hair, I'm going to pull it back, and I'm going to lock it in place. I'm not going to advance my thread anymore. It's going to stay in that position where it is right now. It's actually going to be half hitched in that position, and it's going to be whip finished in that position as well. So I'm going to, again, simply pull this back. As I pull this deer hair back, I'm going to kind of make sure it's pulling down on both sides. I'm going to give it a little bump at the, the head of it around the hook eye just to make sure there's nothing clumping in there. Then I'm going to wrap my thread. I noticed when I did that, the one piece of deer hair must have spun around on me. So I'm going to grab it again. There might be one in there. I think it is just spinning around. That's okay. Okay, so I've made about five turns. I'm going to put one half hitch. And then finally the whip finish. Okay, let me trim away my um, my thread. Now, we have a couple more things to do with this fly. The one thing I, I do like, um, I love the peacock on the bottom. And if you look at the peacock on the bottom, some of those fibers from those deer hair snuck across. So this is a point where I can simply trim them, get them out of there so that peacock is showing. And that's not a problem at all. And I also like to trim the peacock just a little bit. I just like that black peacock showing. I don't want it to be anything crazy in there. So it's not important. It's not that important that it's a full peacock, um, a full peacock head and you see all the fibers. That's really not the most critical part of this fly to me. I just simply like that black peacock head showing. Okay, as I advance this fly around, I'm looking to see spots that it, this deer hair may have kind of spun on me. And there are a few spots, and that's okay. That's where, again, we just go through. We can just trim them away because I might have a few more final trimmings to make on this fly. So I'm just going to pull everything back, see if there's any pieces that are kind of hanging out in there that I don't want them in places where they're showing. And then I'm finally going to go through the, the body one more time and just make any more trimmings to where I think I can kind of bring it down just a little bit. I want to make the body as fine as possible. I also want to get all this deer hair away from my tag. I want, to, I want that nice chartreuse tag showing back there. So I want to get everything as, as far away from it as possible. Something else you'll, you'll want to do is lift up your wing, get some, tri some, um, get some trimming done in there. Let me get done a little bit on this side as well, which is not that important to you because it's me that's looking on this side. Okay, so let me finish this up. I think there's one more stray fiber there. I'll just get that out of there for the aesthetic, aesthetic purposes. And I'll show you this finished fly. So this is the bullet head caddis. A um, couple notable pieces of this fly are this deer hair wing and this bullet head. Um, some guys will epoxy or put some head cement on this if you really want it to, to ensure that it's going to be a solid um, bullet head. We have that underwing that I placed of a, the, the, the fox squirrel body hair. So it's just barely, barely showing in there. And if you look at the fly from the bottom, you might then see some of those darker tips peeking out, which is what, really what I was going for. And you can see some of that darker segmentation in there. Then we have that clip body. Um, the real, again, that was one of the fun parts for me, trimming away all that deer hair. And then finally, if you look near the, the back, we have this chartreuse tag that you'll be able to see from all the, all the perspectives. I have this peacock at the head. And again, as I mentioned before, there's a little piece of peacock right there that I might even trim that away. I don't like this peacock being really too aggressive on this fly. Um, I just like it just being just enough 
for me to notice it and for the fish to notice it as well. Well, this is the, um, the, the bullet head caddis fly. Uh, I hope you enjoyed watching and uh, learning about this fly. It's a really fun fly to tie. Um, I highly recommend it. I've mentioned before some locations, some areas of streams to fish it in. Um, but otherwise, have a lot of fun fishing this fly. Um, I know you will have a lot of fun with it. I'll probably continue messing around with this pattern just to make sure everything is looking great to my specifications. I think you guys know as fly tires, I don't think we're ever finished messing around with these flies. All right, well, thanks, everybody. Um, again, I appreciate the view, and if, feel free to leave any comments or questions on this page, or you can email me directly at tkamisa at gmail.com. Thanks again for watching this YouTube video.